Good morning, spirit of life. They must have thought I needed a lot of volume. I'm sorry. (laughs) You can be seated a few minutes. (laughs) Wow. It's so wonderful to see everybody here today. Even though it's a holiday weekend, it's still the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are in the house of the Lord, and I'm so thankful that we live in a nation to where we have the freedom of choice to come into the house of the Lord and to worship him. We are blessed of God. Well, you know, I really struggled in coming today because I couldn't choose this or this. Always choose God. Always choose God. Well, I guess everybody struggled this morning. Sorry about that. You did take it up with him because you struggled because he was telling you to get to church. (laughs) My goodness gracious. God talks to us on an ongoing basis, and we do that selective hearing thing. Are you selective hearing? Because you heard it, you chose not to listen. God's talking to you today. Mark 16, 15 says, Jesus tells his followers, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. James talked last week about a dandelion life. He talked about the roots being deep in the ground. He talked about how that whenever they blossom, you have that unnerving thing that the kids go and blow the seeds all over the place. And there was a challenge for us to go outside these four walls and tell the good news. So I ask you today, have you went outside the four walls this week and told someone about Christ? Oh, and a hush comes over the crowd. You can always tell whenever somebody got hit by the rock because it comes quiet. Have you went today and told someone about Christ? Have you went this past week, this past two weeks? Have you spoken to anybody about Christ? Because whatever is in here will come out here. Whatever's in here. He's got to come out here. I love my husband. He loves me. So if you have a five-minute conversation with him, he will tell you about his blonde wife. You talk about what's important to you. Is Christ important to go out and spread the news? Is Christ in your heart enough that you will tell others about him? Will they know you without you saying, I serve the Lord? Will they know you serve the Lord by your actions? See, God's not telling you to lead them to Christ. If that happens, praise God. He's asking you to plant a seed. Be that dandelion. And whenever you get blown, plant a seed in someone. We're not just coming to church to do our due diligence. We're coming to church to be nourished, to be encouraged, to be uplifted, to be better than we were before. Because God commands us to not forsake gathering together with fellow believers. He wants us to come together. That you can encourage me and I can encourage you. And we can live a dandelion life by going out and preaching the gospel. Now, I promised my husband I would not preach, so I will not. Some of our conversations, people, you just don't know. (laughs) But I praise God for my excitement because that message hit me home because he made the comment on social media, so everybody heard it, that I hate dandelions. I do hate dandelions. (laughs) It is funny because I told my husband, you got to kill these things. And then he preaches on them. I can't win. (laughs) But I want to encourage you today. Be that dandelion. 
Grow deep in your faith. Well, I don't know how to talk to people about Christ. You don't have to. Just say what God's laying upon your heart. You know, it could be as little as, well, God bless you. I pray that you have a blessed day. Whenever you're leaving someone at the register. Or maybe someone's standing there crying and saying, excuse me, are you okay? Yeah, I just had this, this, and this, and this, and this. Well, can I pray for you? Right then and there. Don't say, I'll pray for you and walk away. You didn't leave a witness when you walked away. You left a witness whenever you prayed for them. That was a seed that you planted. I want to restate the challenge today that Jimmy made. We need to go outside these walls, and we need to tell others about the good news of Christ. We need to be the dandelion and blow where he takes you. Well, I don't want to be over there with those people. Nah. No. Uh Uh-uh. You don't get a choice where God takes you. He just wants you to be obedient and say, here I am, Lord, use me. Can God use you today? Oh, wow, that was the saddest I've ever heard. (laughs) You guys are not a good cheering section. Especially whenever I can feel the vibe. Oh, dear Jesus, she's asking me to do something I feel so uneasy at. Get over it. Let it go. It's been preached forever. Let it go. Because you will not believe the blessings you will receive from God when you're obedient to do what he's asked you to do. He's only asking you to plant a seed. We all need to plant a seed and blow where God takes us. Go outside these four walls and tell others about Christ. Will you stand? I don't know if I've told everybody lately, but I love this church so much. We're a family. Let's start acting like one. Love people. Encourage people. Be what God has called you to be, but speak the truth in love. You heard me. Speak the truth in love because you're accountable if you don't speak the truth heavenly father i thank you lord god for each and every one that's here today lord i thank you lord god for the ones that have come here today lord to worship you lord to be nourished and fed by your word lord i thank you father god that you have blessed us with freedom of choice in this nation to serve you and only you I ask, Father God, that you would bless each and every one this week. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon each and every one in this room this week. That they will be placed upon their heart to go and speak the good news. It's not about preaching the gospel. It's not about forcing people to listen. It's about the small little statements. I'll pray for you. Let me pray for you. God is good. God bless. Lord, I pray that you just lay upon their hearts this week, Lord God, that they will go outside these four walls and let others know that Jesus Christ is real and the word of God is forever and ever. Lord, we thank you for the truth of your word. And we praise you, Lord God, that you are our Lord and Savior. And we will worship you with all of our heart. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.
you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. How many of you this Even morning when I don't see it, need a miraculous touch? Even when I don't feel it, you're working. If it's in your mind, you never stop. If it's in your spirit, you never stop. You never stop. If it's in the physical, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see God we serve never stops. Even when I seeking you out. God we serve. Give me a little more heat on this microphone. Because everybody in here needs to hear this. The enemy is out. The enemy is seeking whom he may devour. And I know that some of our mentality is this. Let us just roll up in a ball, hold on to the Kleenex, and maybe he'll leave us alone. They're helping me preach here in the front right now. It don't work. There's three things that you have to be about. You have to be intentional, number one. You seek Him until you find Him. You don't give up. You don't, you don't find yourself becoming lax on your laurels. Too many people are whining about all they're suffering through. But you ain't doing a thing about it. Back in the day when I was young and in the fields all the time and if a storm came in and I couldn't get out of the woods in time there was first things first you built a shelter and this morning in the shelter of God's arm is where you have to get to and then in the process of building the shelter while you're building you're looking for the next source and that's water and Christ himself is a living water unto us. And the last thing, and it's a necessity, we look for food. And unless you're intentional about coming into the shelter of God's arms, abiding in the ever-flowing water stream, coming up from the belly of life, and looking into and holding on to the promises of His Word, the bread of life, you will fail. And every person in here has failed because you tried to do it on your own. You might have got a few people on your side to try to encourage some of the things that might not be right, but I'm telling you this morning, the God that we serve and if you do not serve the living God I would say don't leave out of this building today unless you make it right you cannot defeat the enemy on your own you cannot fight the battles in your mind on your own you can't fight the battles within your relationships on your own you can't fight all those things that are taking place because you know it Oh, just to show hand. How many of you fight the thoughts when you start to close your eyes? It's, oh my gosh, it just overwhelms me, Pastor. The attacks of the enemy. The what ifs and the how comes. How many of you find that even the joy of the Lord is fleeting in your heart? 
because you spend so much time dwelling upon all the enemy throws at us. See, the song that we're singing, put that up for me, Caleb. The Waymaker part. I knew I just threw that young man a curve. He's the Waymaker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. This morning, we can hold to those promises. Now, if you're a guest this morning and you think that we're radical, you haven't seen anything yet because what God's promised us is the roof is going to be blown off of this place soon. That we will find ourselves in a place that this house is set on fire by the Holy Spirit and people are going to come in to watch it burn. But in this house... For those watching online, I encourage you to be here. For those that are here, we're thankful. Can I just be real blunt right now? God brought you this morning. Not saying anything about those that are opening up their cabins and setting up their campgrounds and putting their boats in the water and all that that's all in good as long as we stay focused upon who God is in the midst because in any given moment the enemy will come in and he'll mess up a perfectly good plan (laughs) unless God's in the midst of it So this morning across this sanctuary I invite you to come forward but if you need to stay right where you're at stay right where you're at but this morning may be the last Sunday morning you're able to walk into this church let me tell you about a good friend wasn't feeling well, was hurting all over. Anybody ever had that physical problem? Went to church, went to the hospital, came around me talking about church, went to the doctor. Let me get it back. Let me back up. Went to the doctor, told the doctor, I'm hurting, and I don't understand why. Through a series of tests over the next several days, found out he is ate up with cancer from his head to his feet. Another friend of ours, she's a woman, she's a pastor's wife, anointed preacher, anointed speaker, great in everything she does. Went to the doctor, told the doctor, I'm hurting everywhere. And forgive me, he says, where does it hurt the most? She says, in my chest. They did a CT scan that very day and found out that she is ate up with cancer. It's in lymph nodes. It is spread all through her entire body, and she just is 40 years old. You don't know if today is the last day that you have in the house of God. It's not said to scare you. That's a reality. The reality of it is God is our answer. You can't seek for other answers and other people, other circumstances and other locations. You can only find God right where you're at. So I'm going to ask Him to sing. And if you need to lay something at the altar this morning, if you need to ask God into your life, God, I have messed up, I have failed, Lord, I have totally failed got myself involved in other things and I need to come back home the way maker that we sing about is the one that will meet you at this altar with others around you to pray for you and with you if you're going through the need of, of, of a mental well a mental reboot 
on who God is in your life, I encourage you to come. If you need salvation, I encourage you to come. If you just need God's arms to wrap around you, I encourage you to come. Because our God is a faithful God. Our God is a God that loves us even when we're not lovable. God is the one that cares for us and has an intention of who you are in his life. So find us this morning, Heavenly Father. Find us faithful in seeking you, being intentional. God, there are some of us that are lost. There are some of us that are desperate. There are some of us that's got off course, Lord, and we're seeking your shelter. We're seeking you for our protection. Lord, we need our thirst to be quenched by your power and your anointing. Out of the rivers of belly, it will flow living waters. God, for the nourishment of who we need, it's you, God. So find us faithful. In Jesus' name, find us faithful. Amen and amen. Wherever you want to go, sis.
as the Lord spoke to us this morning. A message in tongues and interpretation. The world provides a wide path for us. If you listen to enough people, you will hear all kinds of nonsense. But there's only one way to heaven. That's through Jesus Christ, God's living son. And there's all kinds of things that entertain and all kinds of things that fill voids within our life. But nothing can fill the void that God created for himself. God just simply wants us. He wants us to ask Him in. He wants to walk with us hand in hand. He wants us to find the ability to trust Him. God is faithful. God's faithful. Amen. So give the Lord a hand clap of your worship this morning. Anoint him with your hand clap this morning. Amen and amen. If you're praying, stay. Uh, I invite you to be seated. I said, thank you. You can go sit down. What I've, what I'm blessed over is the connection. And if you ever get caught up into this life, I don't have a part that you are not a part of true measure in this house. I need you to do this one thing. The liar, the serpent, the enemy himself is slithering around you trying to wrap up you. Back in the day when I was teaching on all the spiritual things. It's a python spirit that will come in. It will measure you up. It will come in and all of a sudden it will surround you and try to squeeze the life out of you. And what God put in my heart, he says, you don't need to preach about the enemy. You need to preach about me. I've been questioning, Pastor, why don't you preach about this? Why don't you preach about that? Well, I only preach what God lays on my heart. And I answer to him, and no one be offended, and nobody else. But right now, if you've been tormented with the fact that you don't belong here at Spirit of Life, you don't have to stand up. Just take your right foot. And just put your heel on the floor and just grind. Come on. Maybe some of you can't see that. You put your right foot. No, we ain't putting the right foot in or out. And And you just grind on the top of the serpent on Satan's head. Because there's nothing. That is more true than this. You belong. As a child of a living God, you belong. And when the enemy comes in and says, well, I don't have anybody. Well, Proverbs. The women on Wednesday night are stuttering. Not stuttering. They're stuttering. (laughs) Proverbs. And in Proverbs says, to have friends, you must show yourself. Thank you. One person in all bunch. <laughs> to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. Not snobbish, not stuck up, not, oh, don't touch me. About being a friend. And can I tell you, some of you have said to me, some that might be watching, well, Pastor, I, I've, been, I've been hurt in the church. Well, honey, child, you ain't never been hurt until you become the pastor. 
You can owe me, amen, throw me $20 bills, I don't care. <laughs> but the facts are, when it comes being hurt in the house, is because we allow it. So take your little right foot and put your heel down and just grind a little more because that's a lie from the enemy. So this morning we are honored to be able to pay our tithe and give our offerings that the ushers will come. We're going to do what God's called us to do. If you are giving online, download Tithely. Make sure you're giving to the right church. Spirit of Life, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. If you're paying through our PayPal, feel free to do that. But I know that everyone here has been blessed by God's hand. Well, Pastor, I don't have much of anything. Well, you ain't put God in the process. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask blessings upon each one that has a heart to give this morning. God, when we give of ourselves, Lord, we ask that you would just multiply the gift for the goodness, for the ministry of the gospel. That you find us faithful. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen. 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 As they're passing amongst you this morning, I have a few announcements. The Soul Creation next event is scheduled for Saturday, June the 15th at 11 a.m. They'll be making homemade soap. Praise the Lord. Everyone is welcome, and they're going to have a variety of scents available. And this is just not for the ladies. There will be some manly scents available, too. <laughs> Hoorah! <laughs> I told my wife, I came out of my bathroom. My, I have the master bath, and she takes the, the, the whole bath because she has a whole lot more stuff to do with it than I do. But... I told her, I said, thanks for that new soap. It's almond something something, and it smells wonderful. If you need to know how it smells, after church, on your way out, just sniff my hand. It's amazing. <laughs> that proves that I at least washed the back of my hands. Keep smiling. Some of you even shaking your head at me. Now, ladies, all the ladies from here, you need to know that our spots for the women's retreat is filling up. The last I heard, and I think there's an adjustment since then, is nearly 40 women are going. That's already paid their way. There's only 52 spots available. And then, well, I don't know. You might be sleeping in the bathtub or on the floor or hanging out in the car. I'm not for sure, but 52 spots is all there is, and 40 has already been taken. And we have not opened it up to anybody outside of our church yet. It's going to be an awesome time. Amen? I ask that you give your attention. I know it's 1055. Anybody, will anybody give me till quarter after? Okay, for those that don't want to give me till quarter after, a uh, complaint on a $50 or $100 bill, and we'll try to make it quicker. <laughs> but give your attention, if you will, to the screens in front of you. Today we bow our heads. It's not an easy day, because today we remember... We focus our memory on those who served our great nation. Today we set aside our differences and remember those who gave their lives for freedom. We remember the brothers and sisters who fought on our behalf while their brothers and sisters prayed for their safe return. We remember the sons and daughters who carried the flag of democracy while their parents placed flags on their lapels and front porches. We remember the dads and moms who stood watch at the door of war while their children stood watch at home. We remember the husbands and wives who carried the weight of war 
while their spouses carried the burden of an empty seat at the dinner table. Each one our brother, each one our sister, each one our son, each one our daughter. We remember their honor, sacrifice, and courage. We remember that they paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Today we kneel and remember. With compassion and love, we turn our memory to the lives of those who served on our behalf. We honor those who've fallen in service. And we remember the words of Jesus. No one has greater love than this, that one lays down their life for their friends. John 15:13. We honor those that gave it all. The title of the message this morning is just simply Memorial Day. What's coming on the screen is one of the many photographs that you can find of Arlington and all the graves that fill that. Men and women that gave their lives that you and I would be free. And we wouldn't have to worry about enemies coming in after us from overseas or around the world. Today, we give tribute to those that paid the price for our freedom. The next screen is a flag. The flag represents to me the fact that we have seen this nation stand for what was right. What was right in the eyes of God. One nation under God. We came together in, into escaping what uh, tyranny was overseas in England and, and what we came here for was a freedom of religion. It was to serve God and to love God. And now as a nation, we are still focusing on the freedoms. Now there's such freedoms as individuals to walk on the flag or to spit on the flag. See, that's what's happened in our world is that what we used to look at as representing something of value. Now becomes a foundation for upsetness, for the criminal acts against mankind. See, I stand here this morning to remind you that what we do this weekend, what we do tomorrow is to celebrate, to remind us of the men and women that gave it all. The last picture I asked to be put up is, is my Bible. It's, it's the Bible that I have had for over 30 years, and the binding is, is starting to come apart. And, and uh, this was my preaching Bible back in the day, and, and now everything is so accessible that I can pull things straight from the Internet, but I still get into the Word of God. I have to admit, the Bible that I now use is large print. <laughs> when I get in God's Word, I, I don't read off my phone. Uh, when I start to study out His Word, I read from the Word itself, and I hold it in my hand, and I find the value of presenting God who I am as he speaks to me on what he wants me to be through the word. The B-I-B-L-E was common when I was younger, and some of you wasn't even alive when I was younger. Basic instructions before leaving earth. 
It was what God's word was. And if you're going through the problems of life and you're not digging into the word of God, I used it in the illustration of what God laid upon my heart earlier was about the source. The three things we got to get into the word of God. It's the bread of life. It is what brings nutrition to us. When I think of all that God has done for me, all that he wants from me, the only thing I can do is present the word of God. And can I tell you, it's all about Jesus this morning. It's all about Jesus as it comes on the screen, Mr. Kalen. I've used this many times since I found it and I downloaded it. It's all about who Jesus is in our life. Some of us don't realize that while we were out in the middle of ourselves, no matter how far sin had us going or how our friends directed us to go, it was still Jesus that was holding on. Holding on, reminding you what your future will be. We enjoy a lot of freedom in this country. We're free to attend church. We're free to choose what we want to be when we grow up. We are free to choose where we want to live. We are free to choose most of the things that affect our daily lives. We are free to choose because men and women gave their all that we would remain free. But this morning you need to also understand the freedom that I talk about wasn't free at all. It cost the lives of so many. As a nation, we have turned away from who God is. And we proclaim that we are a free nation. But are we really free until Jesus sets us free? We're only free from life when we find ourselves succumbing to who Christ is in the midst of our lives. In John chapter 3, verse 16, it's going to come out of order towards you, Mr. Caleb, but thank you for doing an excellent job. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But look at verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Talking about someone that gave it all. Christ gave it all that you and I would have freedom. Freedom from sin and freedom from the toxic nature of what is happening around us. Let's look at John chapter 8, verses 34 through 36. Jesus answered them, Most as surely I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Next verse. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. This morning, I want to talk to you about the freedom that Christ promised us. The freedom that he promised to those disciples that was listening in in the book here upon my my pulpit this morning. The desk. As I had opened it up to John, those words are in red. You know why? It was Christ speaking. And clearly the freedom that Jesus promised his disciples is far superior far superior to the social or the political freedom that most people yearn for today. 
The freedom that God has given you is to be set into our lives as a purpose. He broke the chains. He removed the shackles of our lives. And it's through the choices of every day if we're going to live for God or we choose not to live for God. We have this ability to come to us and, or to come to know that who Christ is in our lives. And, and this morning, can, can I just express to you how much we truly love each and every one of you, even those individuals this morning that might be a guest. If you hang out and stick around, you will know just how this church will love. But it's sin in our life that separates us. It's sin that binds us. It's sin against God, sin against our fellow man. It's sin against our own way of thinking. When we start to understand that God has more for us, we will walk in the freedom. We will find ourselves habitating and within his realm of what he desires for me. We will find home to be in the presence of God. It's not about just seeking his presence. It's about living in his presence. If we would spend more time in the holiness of God instead of just visiting, come on, on Sunday, we would see a difference in our lives. So you may ask this morning, what is sin? James 4 and 17, this is what sin is. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, To him, it is sin. And if the Bible calls it sin, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it a pink pony with purple polka dots running through a field of of silver clover. But it's still sin according to the word. It's still sin according to what the word of God says. And you know, this is a fact. Most people don't want to read the word of God because once you read it, you're accountable. And there are some people, you know, if ignorance was bliss, there's a lot of individuals that are just joyful all the time. But ignorance is a lack of knowledge. It's not stupidity. It's not being dumb. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge. So when we search after God and we look to God and we want God and we have an intentional heart towards God, all these things that that the world says we have need of will start to dissipate. Our relationship with God is the most important relationship we can have. See, you and I have been set free because Jesus paid the price. He paid the penalty He paid a debt that we did not owe, and I owed a debt that I could not pay. And it was Jesus, and I'm not going to sing the song, but we know what the words of those songs are if we're old enough. Because Jesus will come in, and he will do it. And can I ask you a question this morning? When was the last time? I don't want to show hands. I don't want your head. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to look at Jesus. (laughs) That preach right there. I'll just stop and just that'll be the end of it. Jesus. But how many of you find yourself trying to manipulate the word of God to fit your situation? Mm-hmm. I'll be the first one in the line. Years ago when I was young in the Lord, I was trying to figure out how I could get by with the things that I wanted to get by with and the word would be okay with it. And the Holy Spirit would come down and hit me in the back of the head and said, no, that's foolishness. You need to get your head and your heart lined up. See, James, no, 1 Corinthians 7 23. Look at it as it comes on the screen. You, talking about us, usins, youans, we togetherins, you were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Once God sets us free, why do we go back into the midst of slavery, the bondage? See, when God sets you free, he removes. 
I got four minutes. Listen close. You put back on the shackles. You put back on the chains. You have the ability to do away with it or get back into it. You have the ability to fight it, forsake it, or you have the ability to welcome it back into your life. Well, Pastor, you don't know what my struggles are. You don't know what the Word of God says. If you are free, you are free indeed. God doesn't make mistakes when he calls us out of the darkness of our lives. God doesn't make you a mistake. He has never made junk. He has never made you unworthy. He has never made you to where you was not seen as his child even before you accepted him. Back to John 3.16. You don't have to go there, Caleb. For God so loved the world that he loved the whosoevers. That's us. Remember when you first knew God loved you? Or maybe you're here this morning and you've never known what God's love is. How refreshed you was and how filled with zeal. And, and, and it was all clean and sparkly, like, like a freshly washed and waxed car. You just look at it and think, oh. But you start going through the storms of life and it gets dirty and dingy and muddy. You go through the west side of the lake or the east side of the lake in the middle of fly season and all of a sudden you're just covered in bugs and bug parts. You know what I'm talking about. That'll, that'll come into reality if you've ever tried to clean your car up after that mess. You don't want to be on a motorcycle. Can I get an amen? God set us free. And what hurts me, and I can tell you it hurts. We've been set free, but yet we choose to go back. As a children in the Exodus, the children of God says, let us go back. At least we know what the circumstances are. Church, this morning I ask that you trust God in your future. Because the enemy is out seeking whom he may devour. He's looking to kill, still, and destroy everything there is of God in you. He's trying to tear you down and remove you from the blessings of God. And this is the promise that I can give you this day. That Jesus Christ was the ultimate. He paid it all. There is no more doubt that if you turn your life to Christ, there is no more doubt that you can be set free of sin. facts and the purposes of this. God has you. And where my hurt comes from, I'll get it expressed. When people make a mockery of what was done. When individuals make a mockery that God gave his son, his son gave his life, the power of the Holy Ghost was given to us to empower us to be able to do more and more and more for who Christ is in us. See, the Christ that died rose again, and we know the story. But do we continue to make a mockery of it? Do we continue to go through the process? Well, God, I know it's wrong. We won't need a piano player because I'm going to leave this thought. We need a piano player. We love you, Marissa. Well, God, I know. I know I'm wrong. But I also know that you'll forgive me once more. I know I'm wrong, God. I, what, I, what I'm about to Oh, di Oh, do you know the plans I got for Friday night? <laughs> Sunday morning, I'll come to the altar. I'll ask God to forgive me for what I do. Be careful what your intentionals become. That is a word. It might not be a word, but I made it your intentionals. You know what I'm saying? The intentionals. This is what I'm intending to do. It's premeditated sin in your life. You have to be cautious because there will come a day 
when Christ will look at you and say, depart from me, for I never knew you. But I was there. No, you wasn't. Stand this morning. Memorial Day. We remember and honor all those fallen soldiers that gave it all. But let us not forget that Christ gave it all. That we would be set free for eternity. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, this morning I've done what you've called me to do. I am I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for what you've already done in lives and what you're going to continue to do in lives. Let our focus be upon you and not upon ourselves. Find us faithful to pursue with the intentions of getting a hold of the hem of your garment. God, let us have this fight within us. That we're going to separate ourselves from the world and the world's thinking. And we're going to follow you and abide in you and be found faithful in you. Now, God, bless every heart here this morning, Lord, and we're thankful. And we ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Bless us, Lord, that we may be faithful to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend.